We now move into probably everybody's favorite part of our luncheon, is where we hear stories from our CSF scholars and alumni. Coming to the stage <clears throat> is a man who is a committed husband and father, a diligent worker, and an asset to our community. And I know you're gonna be wowed by his story. Chris Wanquist is a CSF alumnus who has quite a story to tell. Can you join me at the podium and share this story, Chris? Let's give it up for Chris. Thank you, Riley. <clears throat> Good afternoon, everyone. Before I get started, I would like to thank the College Success Foundation for giving me the opportunity to speak today. Ever since, yeah, thank you. Ever since I attended CSF's College Readiness Program for Foster Youth in 2010, I envisioned myself standing on a podium just like this, behind a podium, oh, a stage like this on a, behind a podium, uh, to share my story, and here I am. People usually reminisce about their past as the good old days. Well, my life is a little different. It's common for certain things to be handed down from generation to generation. Well, I'm a third generation foster child, but this stops with me. It's difficult for me to use the title mother and father for my biological parents as neither of them were suited for it. My mother was an addict and living with her was, a, was like being a part of an indie rock band, traveling to different places and sleeping on strangers' couches. She would abandon me for days and weeks at a time. And as a result, Child Protective Services came and gave custody to my father. It was there where I would be physically and psychologically abused from the ages of six until I entered foster care at the age of 13. While living with my father, I paid the bills for my family by cutting and selling firewood. When I would come home from school, my father wouldn't care if I had an essay to write or a chapter to read. It was work all day, or receive a severe beating. And most of the time, it was both. In my father's eyes, I was the mistake, the one night stand, the oops baby. The last year of living with my father was my first year of high school. Because of my mentality and lack of support for my schoolwork, I ended the year with a 1.9 GPA. Finally, when I was 13, someone anonymously reported the abuse and the police came and questioned me. I'd lied to the police before, many times out of fear that my dad would seek his revenge. But that time, I had built up enough courage to tell the truth. I thought it would be best to live with another family member. When I attended a meeting with Child Protective Services, none of my family members wanted to claim me. Witnessing my family remain silent when the question, who wants to take Christopher, was asked, confirmed that I was truly alone in this world. After entering the foster care system, I lived with a total of three families. The first two were not the right fit for me, but then an older couple who was fostering three children took me in. They gave me my own room and my very own bed. They also gave me the freedom and support I needed to recover from my past traumas and set me up for my future success. After receiving such poor grades my freshman year, I was determined to prove to everyone and myself that I was not stupid. For the first time in my life, I could study hard and I earned a GPA of 3.2. I maintained this GPA throughout the remainder of my high school years. But when it came time to apply for universities, I was rejected because my cumulative GPA was too low. My academic counselor did what he could to help me apply for colleges, but he thought it was extremely unlikely that I would get in, and he recommended pursuing other alternatives to higher education. I also could not afford it. Luckily, I did have a social worker who informed me of scholarships that are specific for foster youth. I applied for and received every one of them, including CSS Washington State Governor Scholarship for Foster Youth. By earning these scholarships, I had earned my way to a college education. I spent two years at Whatcom Community College before I transferred to Washington State University in 2014, where there's a large CSF support team there. Go Cougs. <laughs> my, first, yeah, my first year at WCU, I'll be honest, I did not want anything to do with CSF. At the time, my mentality was I did not want to be reminded that I was a foster kid. The problem was, was I had no support network of any kind. 
I was struggling socially and academically, and I chose my ego over seeking help. When I was placed on academic probation my first semester because of my grades, I panicked. I thought I was going to lose all my scholarships because these were the same grades that I had received when I was living with my father. I had thought the absolute worst. But then CSF assured me that every student goes through at least one rough semester. Hearing those words made me realize I didn't have to be alone in college. After that, I fully immersed myself in what CSF had to offer. C CSF was the guiding parent I was missing, and their college curriculum completely changed me as a student. I began attending my professor's office hours, developed great relationships with them, and I'm still in contact with some of them today. My junior year of college, I was a CSF volunteer and a mentored freshman foster youth. I loved it so much that I applied for a paid CSF mentoring position my senior year. CSF also continued to help me with my academic and professional career. They made me aware of internship opportunities for foster youth, including one at the Congressional Coalition for Adoption Institute, the number one think tank for adoption based in Washington, DC. They helped me with my application essays and interviews and they even helped me apply for a voucher to buy professional clothing. Getting accepted to this internship was one of the greatest honors of my life. I lived in Washington, D.C., where I worked in our nation's capital, and I published a policy report on extended foster care, which I presented at the White House and to members of Congress. C Thank you. CSF also paid for me to return back to Washington, D.C. to volunteer for the largest ceremony to, to appreciate those around this country who have positively impacted adoption. In 2017, I had earned my bachelor's degree in psychology from Washington State University. CSF assured me that ob obtaining a college degree is more than possible, and that no matter what we went through, we can make an impact in our communities, government, and nation. They are truly genuine people whose authenticity, kindness, and generosity has no bounds. I was played a horrible hand growing up, and I know what it's like to be utterly alone in this world. But all the injustices that were done to me also fueled my motivation and drive to become successful. I wanted to prove to myself that I had so much to offer this world, and this speech is just the beginning. Sharing my story and helping other foster youth around this country is my passion, and I hope to continue this passion in the future. Thank you to the College Success Foundation for being the parent I desperately needed. And to all of you and your support for this amazing organization, without the College Success Foundation, I would not be the man standing before you today. So thank you. I get no Wow, I've been around CSF a long time and as a scholar, meeting foster care youth, governor scholars, working with them, I'm always amazed and in awe of their inspiring story. And thank you, Chris, again, for sharing. That was incredible, incredible. <clears throat> we are so glad that you're part of the CSF alumni family and our general CSF family. Chris had people along the way that helped him, and as a result, he received a great education and is building a wonderful life. 